Hi guys, Vivian's here. Postcard from Cebu. I love you, baby. Putting pressure on Vivian and other random thoughts uh, for today. Um, I've had, um, and, and I actually appreciate, I really do appreciate, uh, some of the guys that are more experienced than me have a lot more time in their relationships with their Filipino wives, uh, have often said to me, the family will put pressure on Vivian, end quote. And what they mean is that the family will, because in the Philippines, uh, us Kanos, and Kano means anybody that's Western. You could be from Britain or Australia, New Zealand, whatever. Um, us tall white guys with the big nose, we're all rich. So the family assumes, ah, they have an issue. They need some money. They can come to Vivian and Vivian will tell me, oh yeah, give them some money so they can do whatever it is they want to do. Um, so what my more experienced uh, uh, comrades are telling me is that, yeah, the family's gonna put pressure on Vivian. And that's true. And Vivian and I have um, actually prepared for that quite a bit in advance. One thing you should remember, I guess, um, in my relationship with Vivian, we're both older. We're, there's no 20 year olds involved here. Um, Vivian is much closer uh, in age to me and so we've been around the block a few times. As a matter of fact, uh, Vivian and I had discussed this in advance. And so one of the things that we agreed to do was Vivian simply tells her family, well, if you need it that bad, go talk to Ken, <laughs> you know, go talk to Ken yourself. And so they realize they have to come talk to me. They have to speak to me in English. They have to describe what their issue is and they have to ask me for money, and so far, nobody's been willing to do that. Um, so that kind of nips in the bud, uh, the, the, the superfluous stuff that somebody thinks, oh yeah, Ken is rich, he's got money, he can, uh, he can pay some money for this, that, or the other thing. Um, but it doesn't, I, I, I feel like I am obligated because this is my family. Um, when I married Vivian, I did indeed marry the family, and I have brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law, and I care for them very much. So if we're talking about a situation where uh, somebody's in the hospital and they need some help, then by all means, I will help them. I absolutely will. I don't have a problem with that at all. So it kind of depends on the circumstance. Um, will I remodel their kitchen? Probably not. Okay, but if they're, if they're in dire need, they're in the hospital, they need money, um, and I can help them, I will help them. So, um, you know, it's like any, it's, it's just like my family here in the U.S. I mean, it's no different. Um, it depends if my brother calls and says, hey, I want to remodel my kitchen. Can you send me a couple of grand? I'm like, hell no, I can't send you a couple of grand. You know, but if he says, hey, I'm in really in trouble, man, I need to, you know, some money, then I'll help him out. Okay, so it's a matter of circumstance. And I think we all need to understand that. It's not that the family is trying to scam me, but the perception is always that because I'm a Kano, uh, and once again, it doesn't matter if I'm from England or Australia or whatever, uh, the fact that I'm a Kano, uh, their perception in their mind is that I am way more wealthy than the average Filipino, and that's probably true. So um, just keep that in mind, guys. Uh, as you, when you go and you become involved with a Filipina, you're going to experience that, and that is very true. So I thank all you guys um, with a lot more experience than, than what I have uh, for bringing that issue up. That's a very valid point. Um, the second uh, second thing, and these are kind of random thoughts here, but the second thing um, that comes to mind is dirty Kanos. And uh, it, it's kind of interesting. I, several years ago now, I guess, 
when I first met Vivian, we we would talk, you know, we would chat on Skype back in those days. We would chat on Skype and, um, you know, I started having feelings for Vivian and, you know, so I said, okay, well, when my cash flow is right, I will, you know, book a trip and come to the uh, Philippines to visit you. And, um, and I remember she would always ask when, 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 and I would, I would always answer soon, soon, soon. Um, and I'd tell her to check her email and because I told her that I would uh, email my itinerary uh, once I booked my uh, travel and I did. And so I arrived in um, Cebu and she met me at the airport and we got into a taxi and we actually, I'm sorry, this was not that night. Uh, it was another night, a couple of days into the trip. We were going from the hotel to Minglanilla. Um, and uh, she's talking to the cab driver in uh, Cebuano. And the cab driver, and later she tells me, yeah, the cab driver was saying, ma'am, you, you made such a good choice. You have such a clean husband. Okay, so guys, if you're going to the Philippines, it's no different than a first date anywhere else, right? Make sure you're clean, shaven, and you know, you smell good, and you have on nice clean clothes. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Americans um, and other foreigners, other, you know, foreigners from the Filipino standpoint, um, in dirty clothes and not shaven. And, you know, I mean, there are some guys that can do the five o'clock shadow thing and still look clean, but most cannot. Okay. So if you're going, especially if you're going for the first time to meet a Filipino you've been chatting with online, man, go clean. You know, I remember, uh, about two hours before we landed, I, I on the plane, I brushed my teeth, you know. Uh, so you should do that. And remember also that you're always an ambassador for the country that you're from. So when I arrive in Cebu, I'm always an ambassador for America. And I keep that in mind. Um, the last random thought I have, and this one is uh, more for the YouTubers out there. You guys that are in doing the YouTube thing, and there are a lot of us in this Philippine space now. And I haven't heard anything about it from any of the others, but I have heard about it uh, on YouTube. So I thought I'd bring this up. And that is, there's been a change in YouTube uh, in what they call their advertiser friendly policy. Um, YouTube is going to start to punish YouTubers, okay, who express, and these are quotes here I'm reading, politically incorrect opinions or dare to offend viewers. And they're gonna punish you by demonetizing your content. So if you're one of the guys, especially those guys that are living in the Philippines, it, it, this they're the first guys I thought about because chances are you're a little more dependent on that income that you're receiving from YouTube, okay? Um, and uh, the article goes on to say the new rules have sparked an outcry from the YouTube community because they are so incredibly restrictive. Okay, so YouTube will now retain the right to demonetize any videos that contain controversial or sensitive subjects and events, including subjects related to war, political conflicts, natural disasters and tragedies even if graphic imagery is not shown. So now most of you know, or maybe you don't know, but most of you should know that uh, Google is a very left-wing PC organization. Um, they support um, the left-wing candidates in the US elections. And they're also a huge corporation. They're owned by uh, their parent company, I think it's called Alphabet. I just heard on Bloomberg Radio that they are in the top five capitalized com uh, companies in the world. I mean, they're huge. And they make their money from advertising revenue. So they are going to start to clamp down on YouTube channels. And I, a couple of um, vloggers from the Philippines come to mind uh, that are doing these kind of controversial things, especially being slanderous using a lot of foul language and stuff. The article goes on to say, inappropriate language, including harassment, 
profanity and vulgar language is also being demonetized. So, you know, for me, me and Vivian, uh, well, we don't really care. I mean, we're lucky if in 10 years we make it back enough money to pay for the GoPro. But some of the other guys that are out there, that are especially the ones that are in country, I think are counting on their money that they, they get from YouTube and it may not be coming in. Okay. So it goes on to say YouTube's new policy will completely de-incentivize. In other words, <clears throat> it's going to knock you off. YouTubers from discussing politically incorrect topics or expressing controversial opinions because they know they will be punished for doing so. Okay. And that includes profanity and vulgar language. Now, the profanity and vulgar language, personally, I don't have a problem with that. I've already said on this channel that I don't want to see that. If you do it in the comments, I'm going to delete you. I'm going to ban you. Um, that's the way it is. Um, I, got, I do have a problem with politi political opinions and natural disasters and tragedies and things like that. I, I think that's stretching it, but that's YouTube's decision. Anyway, guys. Uh, keep that in mind. If you're a YouTuber and you're counting on that money from uh, ad revenue, you better keep in mind uh, the content of your channel. Huh? So anyway, guys, up there, subscribe button. Please click that subscribe button to subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, feel free to leave comments in the comments section below. As I always say, if it's appropriate, and I mean it. Um, Feel free to leave a comment uh, in the comment section below. Thanks for watching guys so much. We'll see you later. Bye.